When America was entering into World War II, music legend Elvis Presley was just reaching the peak of his success in the entertainment industry. But that didn't stop the all-American singer from proudly accepting his duty to defend his country, something which won him a great deal of respect with both his fans and detractors alike. Although the singer's time overseas might not have been all it was cracked up to be by the singer's many adorers, it's certainly admirable Elvis didn't try to get out of being drafted and actually saw some time in active duty. Join Facts First as we explore the truth about Elvis Presley's military career. It was just before Christmas in 1957 when legendary singer Elvis Presley received the news he was going to be drafted into the U.S. Army. He was spending the holiday at his famous Graceland estate and was amidst the peak of his career success. While Elvis could have arguably used some of his connections to try to get out of serving in the war, he was actually grateful for the opportunity to serve his country. Elvis had always been incredibly patriotic and had proudly submitted his draft card as soon as he turned 18 years old. By the time Elvis had been drafted into the army, he was already a bit of a legend in his own time. He'd already released classic singles such as Hound Dog, Blue Suede Shoes, and Heartbreak Hotel, and had starred in hit Hollywood films like Love Me Tender. The singer had already defined what it meant to be a popular music idol, and has gone down in history as the first of his kind. Elvis's acceptance of his draft into the U.S. Army only helped cement his cultural legacy that much more. Although Elvis was grateful for the opportunity to defend his country after America's entrance into World War II, fans were terrified at the prospect of losing their new idol. Letters were sent by the thousands to military offices asking for Elvis's draft notice to be rescinded, but Elvis made it clear to his fans he wanted to go serve, regardless of the draft. Still, Elvis was willing to receive one deferment in order to complete filming of the movie he was currently working on, King Creole. He accepted the deferment not so much for his own sake, but for the crew's, feeling he had a professional obligation to finish the film. And it's good he did, as the film has gone down in history as one of the singer's most popular movies, as well as his own favorite. Elvis received his draft notice on December 20th, asked for his deferment on December 24th, and received notice that the deferment had been accepted on December 26th. All in all, he had a busy Christmas in 1957. Elvis' original date of induction into the U.S. Army had been on January 20, 1958, but it was postponed to March 24 after the deferment. The deferment period also allowed Elvis time to record several songs, some of which were used in King Creole, and some of which were released as singles while Elvis was serving overseas. Elvis had finished all his remaining work by March 14, 1958, and had some time to relax with his family back in Memphis before being officially inducted. During this time, Elvis was seen shopping for records, going to the barber, roller skating, and going to the local drive-in theater with some of his closest friends. That night, Elvis was apparently so excited for his induction into the army, he was unable to sleep. The next day, his friends and family saw him off as he headed to Fort Chafee, Arkansas. Besides Elvis's family and friends, his manager was also there to see him off before he left to become inducted. His manager was Colonel Tom Parker, and he wasn't too happy about the fact that his most prestigious and highest earning client had been drafted. Tom claimed that Elvis's drafting had cost the singer around a half a million dollars in income. Tom did his best to keep releasing singles while Elvis was serving overseas, but Elvis's service actually ended up being incredibly beneficial for the singer's career due to the clout he received from fans and detractors alike. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First for more. Before serving in World War II, Elvis had been one of the biggest celebrities in the world, but he was also a bit of a controversial figure amongst the more conservative members of the population who hadn't yet gotten used to the world of popular music. Because of this, Elvis's induction into the U.S. Army did a lot to help him garner the respect of the people, as he was finally seen as a positive role model for the youth instead of a nuisance. The press made a huge deal out of Elvis's induction into the army. They followed him to Arkansas, and the singer receiving his GI haircut became a major press event seen by eyes around the world. On March 24, 1958, Elvis Presley was officially sworn in as a private. Elvis began going through basic training and didn't take his first leave until June. At that time, he went back to Memphis and recorded a few songs before heading back into training. Elvis was serving during the subsequent release of the film King Creole a month later, and the film was met with positive reactions from critics and audiences. Elvis later claimed it was the absolute best of the 31 films he had starred in during his career.
As soon as Elvis was finished with basic training, tragedy struck. Elvis received news his mother wasn't doing well, and he was given emergency leave to go visit her on her deathbed. She died in August 1958 with her son present. Elvis returned to service on August 24th and was sent overseas to see active duty the next month. He was greatly affected by the loss of his mother, and was likely grateful the war was about to take his mind off it. He was stationed in Friedberg, Germany. According to the singer, his time during service was a challenge, but one he was ready and willing to meet. It was hard for him to get used to the new location, and his outfit was also said to have gotten quite a bit of field duty. During his time serving, Elvis slept in the snow and ate rations, both of which were new experiences. Although some of the times were difficult, he was glad to have the opportunity to try it out, and glad to be serving his country. Later in Elvis's multi-year military career, he bought a house to share with his grandmother and father slightly off the boundaries of his base in Germany. The singer also filmed the movie G.I. Blues during this period. After buying his off-base property, Elvis continued working in the day, but began having lavish parties at night, some of which included improvised musical jam sessions with his army buddies. It was one of these buddies who introduced Elvis to a woman who later became his wife. Though she was only 14 at the time, Elvis was introduced to Priscilla Bolio by one of his army friends, and the two went on to become married several years later. Elvis returned from Germany in 1960. Over the course of his military career, he had risen to the rank of sergeant. He was honorably discharged from service on March 5th, and subsequently traveled back to his home state of Tennessee. Elvis had many plans for his career when he returned home from serving in the Army, and he jumped back into the saddle without missing a beat. Although people like his manager had feared that the time overseas would hurt his career, it only ended up boosting the singer's popularity in the long run. While Elvis felt that the music industry may have changed a little while he was gone, he was ready and willing to rise to the challenge of climbing right back to the top. When it came time for Elvis to speak on his tenure in the U.S. Army in the years after his service, Elvis expressed it was hard for him to feel as if he was meeting the expectations of the people. Unlike other soldiers, all eyes were on Elvis. This affected the singer not only during his service, but it actually continues to affect his legacy to this day. Many people still hold Elvis's time in the Army up to a critical eye and question whether or not the singer was truly the hero many make him out to be. One of the friends Elvis would have improvised musical jam sessions with while serving in Germany was Charlie Hodge. Charlie went on to work with Elvis in his musical career after both of them returned overseas, and he stayed a key member of Elvis's band until the latter's death. Now it's time to hear from you. Comment down below to share whether you think Elvis deserves respect for his time in the U.S. Army. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.